All right, welcome to video number seven here in the Farnsworth House tutorial. Uh, today we're going to teach you how to use the sweep one rail command, okay? And so what we're going to do is we go into perspective. You'll notice that we have um, this curve here, which is going to be our roof. And let's go ahead and zoom up here and take a look at our object, right? Now you'll notice that this roof, it looks like it's got sort of some overhangs on it as well as kind of some slabs just like that. So what I'm going to do is, um, and you'll also notice that if we were to create a cross section of this, that cross section of this little detail is exactly the same regardless. And let's go ahead and look at this one as well. Uh, we've got some trees in the way, but it's exactly the same regardless all the way around this particular um, uh, building. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create something that more or less looks like that cross section. All right. And I'm going to do that from memory. So just because it's a little bit easier. All right. I'm going to go to my right view. All right. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just select this curve here, that one curve. And I'm going to go up here to this little light bulb, click on that light bulb. And I'm going to go down to the fourth one over, which is basically invert the selection and hide the objects. And if I click on that, everything that's not locked is going to disappear, which is pretty cool, right? And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start to draw and I'll start with just a single line. And the reason for that, notice I've got a layer here called roof and that is current. I'm going to draw a single line and right now it's locking vertically. I could also hold down my shift and lock it. I'm going to draw that line right to there and I'm going to select it. I'm going to look at it in my perspective. All right. And I'm going to see, yep, it appears to be right there. So that looks pretty good. All right. So now I'm going to go back to my right view and I'm going to use my polyline. Okay. And I'm going to start to draw this part of the roof. I'm going to go up just a little bit and I'm going to go out a little bit. And I'm just going to put some flanges in here. And I'm going to go up there just a little bit. And the reason I'm doing that is I know if I do it this way, create this sort of cross section curve, it'll create kind of some cool shadows when I get around to rendering it. Whoops. I ended up hitting uh, clicking and finishing this curve and that's fine. Uh, we'll learn a new sort of technique. I'm going to click on the polyline here and I'm going to go make sure I'm going to go right here where it says smart track, make sure that that is on and watch this. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to click on to this. Uh, um, I just sort of snap to that curve. And right now as I drag, it's hard to see, but as I drag my mouse to the right or the left, you can see there's kind of this faint white line. And that basically means that I am absolutely perfectly in line with this point, right? So I'm going to want to actually draw a line out here in, in perfectly in line with that. And I'm also going to, once I get directly below this one, and I'm going to start and snap up there. All right. And so the way to get to find that out is I'm going to go ahead, hover over this end, drag, hover over it and then drag down. So there's my first line and there's my second line. I'm going to hit escape because I've gotten, I've snapped to too many things. Smart track can only s snap to uh, three things at once. So I'm going to go ahead and start my polyline again, snap on that. And then I'm going to go click snap on that. So I'm going to start it. And I'm going to wait. And as soon as I got even with that particular um, end point, it gave me a smart track. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag over and click again. And then I'm going to hit enter. All right. So now I'm going to take all of these curves because right now I've got one, two, three different curves. So I'm going to select those and then I'm going to go ahead and join them. All right now, before I do anything else, I'm going to make sure that these are actually still in line with each other. And they do appear to be in line. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a command called sweep one rail. Okay. Now, if you have, and if you start the sweep one rail command, uh, right here, like at a corner, it's entirely possible that something bad can happen. All right. So typically if I start the sweep one rail, I'd want to start it like in the middle somewhere. All right. And we'll find out about that in just a second. So I'm going to hit control Z and we'll see if we can't screw this up the first time. So you'll understand why I'm telling you to do something instead of just doing it. Right. 
So the command is sweep one rail, and you can type in sweep one. You see, I've done that, and I'll hit enter. And now what it's going to say is select the rail. The rail is this guy right here. Okay, and now it's going to say select the cross section curves. And that's that one right there. And I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to hit enter again. Yeah, okay, great. I'm going to say okay. And as you can see, because of the orientation of where that curve was, it actually swept a curve that was uh, parallel with this one in that direction. So it gave me this really funky, odd thing, right? So watch this. If I hit Control-Z, and if I were just to, um, I can do one of two things. I can either move this into the center, or I can take this guy. I can go to my top view. And I can rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm actually going to use the uh, rotate command instead of the gumball. I'm gonna close that. And I'll type in rotate. Enter. And watch. I'm going to snap here, snap there. And I'm going to hold down my shift. And there we go. So now if we jump into our perspective, we'll notice that this has been rotated 90 degrees. So now if I do sweep one rail, I know that it's going to follow the curve in this direction. And it'll actually give me, it should give me something pretty nice. There's still a possibility that it might screw up when it finishes on this end. So let's see. And again, that's why I'm telling you the easiest thing to do is just move it into the middle of a curve. So let's go sweep one. Here's my rail. Here's my cross section curve. Hit enter and hit enter and OK. And now I got myself a pretty sharp looking exterior molding, right? Pretty cool. Worked out nicely, right? So um, I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Z. So that's what we want it to do. And again, if you don't want to deal with doing it once or twice or three times and trying to figure out what goes where, if you just create your curve, move it to the center of the um, rail that you're going to sweep it around and then run that command sweep one select the rail select the cross section curve hit enter and hit enter go ahead and hit OK and there you go you're gonna have something perfect All right. now the one issue is there is indeed a seam right here and so that could bite you later when it came to rendering but in this case um, not really a big deal Okay, I'm going to stop the video right now, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks.